Mr. Tilden's public life spanned a larger portion of the history of our republic than that of any other eminent American statesman, and he occupied the unique position in our history of being the only one selected by the nation for its chief magistracy, who was never clothed with its responsibilities. The Tildens of America can trace their lineage back by authentic records to John Tilden, an influential clothier of Ben Enden, who was born about the year 1400. He was the direct progenitor of Nathaniel Tilden, who with his family, consisting of his wife Lydia, seven children, and seven servants, in the month of March, 1634, embarked in the good ship Hercules, of Sandwich, of the burthen of 200 tons, John Witherby, master, and were there in transported to the plantation called New England. John Tilden, the grandfather of Samuel J. Tilden, served in the French War, and brought back with him from the capture of Louisburg a French musket, with which his distinguished grandson had his first and last experience as a sporting man. It was a smooth bore, so he tells the story, flaring at the muzzle, without any place for a bayonet, with a flint lock, and a stock of, probably, French walnut. It had become worn and kicked badly at every discharge, so that it was nearly as dangerous to be behind the gung as to be in front of it. I always shrank from killing harmless birds and animals for sport. The only hunting adventure I was ever engaged in was with the sold musket when I was a very young man and, under medical advice, was seeking exercise. My younger brother, Henry, then a little boy, went along to carry ammunition and the game. My first fire was at a flock of pigeons perched on a tree, and I brought down eight of them. My second fire was at a few who had alighted on the top of a very tall tree. I did not get a good rest against my shoulder, and, on the discharge, the old muskets wept so violently across my face that I dropped it on the ground to hold my face between my hands. On the next fire I missed my aim. The net result of eight discharges was sixteen pigeons. I stood on my honors as a sportsman and never made another trial. Polly Younglove Jones, on the 8th of January, 1802, Mary de Lamb Tilden and became the mother of Samuel J. Tilden. She was lineally descended from William Jones, who came from England in 1660 and settled in New Haven, Connecticut, where for his remaining 46 years, he was one of the most prominent and influential personages in the colony. Polly Patterson, a younger sister of Samuel J. Tilden's maternal grandmother, married Moses Younglove. After the doctor was captured by the British forces, consisting of Tories and Indians, he was stripped of all his clothes, except his drawers, and marched to Quebec, barefooted. In his imprisonment he was fed through a knothole by a soldier whose family he had attended medically in the absence of its head. His sufferings were so great that he was left an invalid for the rest of his life. He believed the Indians were cannibals, and that they would have eaten him if he had not been exceedingly thin. Thus much of the American branch of the Tilden ancestry, it seems to have enjoyed an existence of corresponding dignity and usefulness in England. Estates bearing the name of Tilden have been maintained in the parish of Marden, in Kent, for a period of nearly 600 years.